In this video, I'm going to show you the Media Explorer in Reaper. So when you're using Reaper, you probably want to import files like audio or video files into your project. And one of the best ways to do that is using the Media Explorer. Now we could do it right from your hard drive. Set a folder right here. I could just drag a file and drop it either down here or over here. And that imports it into Reaper. But using the Media Explorer, there's a lot more features that are more useful for this process. So to get to it, we'll go up here to the View menu and choose Media Explorer. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's all Control X, and on Mac, it's Option Command X. And if we choose it, it opens up this window. Now, right now, this window is floating. If we want to dock it, we could hit this button, and it goes down here to my dock. Or we could drag the tab from here right out like this and it goes back to floating. You could use it whichever way you prefer. So the Media Explorer looks like this. And we can see all our files in this dialog. We can go up here to our project directory and see all the files that are already in our project. So if we want to use them again, we can just drag them and drop them to tracks or below tracks to create new tracks. But it's even more useful for files that are not in our project. So if I go back here, I have a folder I created called Sound Library. This is where I keep all my samples and loops that I like to use in my projects. So because of that, I probably want to save this as a shortcut so it'll be over here on the left side all the time. So I can right click it, add to shortcut list, and now it shows up here all the time where I can see all my samples and loops that I created for this purpose. So if I close this window and open it back up, so it's going to be right here, or wherever you put it. Now we can also search for files right over here. So if I type in kick, I'll see all the files in that directory with kick in their name. Or we could type in snare and see the same thing. All the files with snare in their name show up. Now if I go back in to my sound library, we can see I have folders created for different groups of sounds. Like down over here, I have a kicks folder. And if I open it up, I have other folders within it for these kicks or these. But if I wanted to make this a little easier, let's go back out. I could choose this folder. And instead of creating a shortcut for it, we could right click it and choose to make a database from this folder. And what that's going to do is put the name of the folder over here but create a database with all the samples in those folders. So we could see the name of the folder over here and the name of the file or sample over here. So you can scroll through and we're not gonna see any folders, just the samples or loops within those folders. So it's a little more useful than simply saving a shortcut for a folder. Let's create another one down here for my snares. Again, I have multiple folders in the snare folder, so it's more useful to right click it, make a database from the folder, and have all the files listed like this with the folder name and the file name of the sample right here. Now we could also see up here different columns to choose from. We can list things by their name, by favorites, or mark them by their size. And if we scroll over here, we can see different options or metadata we could choose. If we play a file, it's automatically going to be marked, letting us know we played it. But if we want to list it as a favorite, let's choose this one, this one, and this one. Now we can right click it and set it as a favorite. If we reopen that window, view it by favorites, and just see our favorites up here. We could right click it and uncheck our favorites, and they go back to the way they were before. And like I said before, we could add metadata to any of the files. Let's go to our kicks. Let's put it above our snares, change the order. 
And let's say we like this kick, this kick, and this kick. We want to attach this to a certain artist. We can right click it and go down here to edit metadata tag and choose artist or any other option we want. Let's choose artist. Then we can name it based on the project or artist we want to assign to these samples. Let's name it Joe. And we can see over here, Joe is listed as the artist. Now it's not in there permanently. If we want to write it to the file, we can right click it and go down here and write edited metadata to the media. And now it's written into the file. So at any point, we could reopen this window and just search by the artist name. And those files are going to show up. The file is based on that artist's name. So it's a great way of cataloging different files for different artists, or albums, or genre, or comments, or BPM, or keys, or any custom tags we want. Now, by default, we're going to hear the files when we click on them. If that's not working for you, make sure you turn on Auto Preview right here. If it's off, we're not going to hear the files, although we still can by using our arrows. Hit the right arrow to hear it, and hit the left arrow to stop hearing it. And we can go up and down to choose which sample we want to hear. We'll leave this on, and we're going to hear it by default, just by clicking on it. So this topic is pretty long, so I've divided it into three parts. Check out part two of the Media Explorer next. So that's pretty much it. That's the Media Explorer in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.